Hi, this is Mark Payne. Uh, I'm back with the second part of uh, looking at the 13-inch uh, Apple MacBook Pro uh, on M1 Apple Silicon. Uh, in this session, we're going to be looking at Logic Pro Audio, uh, running a bunch of plug plugins that aren't supposed to be supported on Big Sur and Apple Silicon. First of all, though, we're going to have a look at uh, some basic performance benchmarks. Now, I'm not uh, alone or unique in running these kind of benchmarks, but I just thought that uh, I'd share my results and I'd like to compare those with my iMac Pro, which is my um, um, my studio machine here. First of all, I did uh, I ran uh, Geekbench 5 uh, using uh, the compiled version of Fort Apple Silicon. So it's it's the best case of how it's going to run. Um, the the results that I got were a single CPU performance of um, uh, 1,731, um, uh, so 1.7K. 1 is is the best single uh, CPU score I've seen on anything. Um, my uh, my iMac Pro only manages uh, one one three two, so that's very very performant. Uh, the multi uh, core score was seven thousand five hundred nod, and again uh, that's very close, or you know not not a million miles away uh, from my iMac Pro, which is is quite surprising really, because the iMac Pro is a is a 10 core um, uh, machine. I just want to say that the the Apple Silicon uh, 13 inch is is actually more performant than the uh, the 16 inch uh, 2000 machine running on Intel. The second thing I really tested was rather than uh, running Geekbench on the um, uh, using Apple architecture, I used Intel architecture. Um, so basically, I'm making it run in the Rosetta um, emulation environment. In doing that, it did reduce the single core score down from um, the kind of 1,715 down to 1,298. So, you know, 1.3K. But that's still really impressive single core performance. And in fact, is better than my iMac Pro. Um, in, in a similar way, running uh, through Rosetta 2 uh, brings down the performance of the multi-core score from uh, around 7.5K down to just over 5,000. Uh, we're still more, more performant than a 16-inch uh, um, uh, latest Intel machine. And the, the other thing to bear in mind is this machine just doesn't get hot, so um, it doesn't heat, heat soak. And so it doesn't it doesn't throttle because of heat soaking. Um, I'm really surprised just how cool it, it 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 stays. And because it's so power efficient, the other thing that's going to happen is the battery life is going to uh, last forever. I I've run the machine almost for two days and not recharged it. The surprising thing about all of this is, it, it, you know, one of the things that we all worry about is well, I worry about it anyway. Is battery life, you know, uh, the cycle count. And of course, if you've got a if you've got a MacBook that uh, runs for twice the amount of time on a battery charge then over the life of it it's going to end up with with half the number of cycles so well, rather than you feeling a bit disappointed with your battery performance after you know two years maybe you're starting to notice it after four years which i think is a huge effect i mean the battery technology has not changed the reason why the thing runs for so long is because the uh, cpus are so efficient they're not they're doing processing, not not warming things up. So I've not really heard the fans run. So the the second um, uh, test is is to have a look at Cinebench, which which is a kind of CPU stressing rendering program. You don't get a result out of it until it's run for ten minutes. So it really is a good way of testing uh, the the long term. Um, uh, uh, performance of the machine once it's once it's been running for a while and, and everything's been heated through. Now in this situation, really, even running Cinebench, uh, the fans run, but they're, they're really really quiet. The um, Cinebench score from the Apple machine, the Apple Silicon uh, M1 uh, MacBook Pro was seven thousand six hundred. Well, really, you could say that. That in these in in this jump we we go from a um, a MacBook Pro 16 we could basically double the Cinebench performance to get to the the new uh, M1 silicon machine and then double it again for my 10 core iMac Pro so it sits really nicely between those two things but of course 
It's great to be able to tell you that, but of course it completely obliterates the existing uh, Intel 13-inch a MacBook. It's just not even comparable. It's getting on for, um, you know, nearly four times the performance in terms of uh, Cinebench. And it's testament to really what the thermal, the thermal capacity of this machine is. Okay, then the final thing that I ran was um, a Bruce X, uh, uh, which is a Final Cut Pro 4K video thing. And uh, the, the results that I got was 18 seconds to complete the rendering task. Now that compares with 17 seconds, which would be the result for a 2020, 2019 MacBook Pro 16. Now I know that if you buy the most expensive GPU you can put in that machine, which is the 5600M, that can be manipulated down to nine seconds so that that is very very impressive for the macbook pro 16 intel but but once you've configured that machine to do that you spent about four and a half grand uk pounds if you compare it to the 13 inch intel machine that that has a bruce x performance of about 36 seconds so it's it's getting on to be twice as performant similar performance to the 16 inch intel twice the performance of the 13 inch Intel machine, 11 seconds for my iMac Pro versus 18 seconds. So it's about, you could argue roughly half the performance of the iMac Pro with its GPU and its 10 cores. And you know, in, in the intro, I said, if it was half the performance of my iMac Pro, I'd be very, very, very impressed. And, and of course it is, all of that in this form factor. The next thing I looked at was um, uh, Blackmagic. Uh, Blackmagic designs, uh, you know, the standard disk I/O throughput. And again, I'm getting I'm getting read and write speeds of in the order of um, uh, 2,500 megabytes per second, which is really really impressive. It's 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 as good as my iMac Pro. So that is promising and and would lead me to believe that maybe it's going to run my Logic Pro sessions with all my plugins, um, you know, running my 96K live sessions um, uh, with everything running native. So that's the really the next thing that I wanted to look at.